Hi, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm going to share with you some behind the scenes material from Avatar The Last Airbender The Promise, which is a graphic novel series from Dark Horse Comics. The first volume will be available in early 2012. First, let me start by introducing myself. My name is Gene Yang, and I am a cartoonist. I write and draw comic books. Here are some of the books that I've done in the past. I've been doing this for about 15 years. Now, out of all of my books, my most well-known is probably this one. This is American Born Chinese. It was released by First Second Books in 2006, and it's an exploration of Asian American identity and my own cultural heritage. It's also an Asian American retelling of the Monkey King story, which is a very popular Chinese legend. My most recent graphic novel to be released was this one. This is Level Up. It was released in June of this year. It's a collaboration between me and a friend of mine named Tin Fam. I did all the writing, he did all the art. The story is all about video games and medical school. So this will be the next project that will be released that I was involved in. Um, Avatar The Last Airbender The Promise will pick up right where the original animated series left off. Like the moment after. Now, I was first introduced to the world of the Avatar by this guy. This is Derek Kirk Kim. He's a very successful cartoonist. We actually did a book together called The Eternal Smile. Derek did a book on his own called Same Difference in Other Stories that won all sorts of industry awards. If you haven't picked up this book and read it, you really owe it to yourself to do it. This is one of the most amazing graphic novels ever produced. Well, in any case, years ago, Derek loaned me the DVD collection of Avatar The Last Airbender. And by the third episode, I was completely hooked. I was a, a, a true Avatar fan. And that's why when in December of 2010, when, when, when Dark Horse emailed me and asked me if I wanted to write a Avatar, um, an Avatar comic book series for them, I jumped at the chance. A Dark Horse editor emailed me. She told me that she had read some of my previous work and really liked it. She also told me that Dark Horse had released an Avatar The Last Airbender art book and, and it had been pretty successful. This is a beautiful art book. If you haven't seen this one, man, you, you, uh, you got to go find a copy. I think I would like this art book even if I didn't like the show. It's, it's that well made that well put together. Dark Horse has also released a collection of previously published Avatar The Last Airbender comics called The Lost Adventures. Most of the comics in this collection were originally published in Nickelodeon magazine. Um, and, and, and this is a beautiful book as well. It's, it's got tons, it's full of, full of tons of great art and, and great stories. So um, this editor calls me up and she tells me that Nickelodeon is planning to do a, a series called Legend of Korra that will be a sequel to the original Avatar The Last Airbender animated series. The Legend of Korra will take place 70 years in the future and Dark Horse would create this graphic novel series that would fill in that gap between Aang and Korra. Uh, I was I was totally um, Totally excited to, to get the opportunity to write this this comic book series. Pretty soon after uh, I agreed with Dark Horse, they put me on the phone with uh, Brian DiMartino. Uh, oh, not Brian DiMartino. Mike DiMartino and Brian Konitzko. I, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing Brian's last name right. But um, but I, uh, I had several phone conversations with them and, and with the folks at Dark Horse. We threw out a bunch of ideas. Um, and I also, I also feel like I got a sense of how they break down a story. I feel like I learned a lot about storytelling just from, from talking, um, talking through the comic with them. Uh, and I also got to admit that most of the great ideas that were thrown out during those phone conversations came from them. Well, I took a lot of the ideas that I liked and I put them together into an outline and then a script. Comic book scripts aren't like screenplays. There's not one set format that you have to follow. Uh, most companies have their own formats. Most independent writers like me have our own formats. And this is actually the first time I've ever written a comic book script where I followed somebody else's format. So Dark Horse has a format. I followed it. 
I produced a script. This script went through the folks at Dark Horse. It went through the folks at Nickelodeon. And it also went through Mike and Brian. Everybody gave me notes. I did a few revisions on, on this uh, script. And when it was solid, it was given to Gurihiru. Gurihiru is a Japanese art team. It's basically two women. One of them does all the penciling. The other one does all the inks and the colors. And they are absolutely amazing. Most of their work is done for the Japanese market. So they've done a lot of work for Japanese cartoons and um, Japanese video games and Japanese comic books. In the States, they've done a few projects for Marvel. They did an all-ages Captain America um, graphic novel. They also did an all-ages uh, Thor graphic novel. If you look through their work, you'll see a distinctive Japanese style. But I think they also, like storytelling-wise, they, they ride this very fine line between American and Japanese comics, where fans of either will understand what they're doing. It, it's, uh, it's really stellar storytelling. So, to be honest, the remainder of this presentation, the, you know, the, the meat of this presentation, is just me bragging about Gurihiru's work. Here's what I mean. Uh, like I said before, the promise starts immediately after the animated series ends, but a few pages in, the story jumps ahead a year. To indicate that time jump, Gurihiru was asked to redesign the clothing of all of the major Avatar characters. And they, they did a great job. So Aang, here's how Aang looked in the original series, and here's how he's going to look in the comic. You'll notice that his clothes in the comic are a lot like what he was wearing in the final episodes of the animated series. I think the only difference is his pants. His pants in the animated series were Fire Nation pants, and here they are not. Here he is with Momo, looking cute as ever. Here's Katara in the original series. And here's how she's going to look in the animated series. So she keeps the same color scheme, but her hair gets fancier. I think that might be a theme in all of these character designs, is fanciness. So here's Sokka, and here's a fancier Sokka for, for the comic book series. You notice the fancy little design that he has at the bottom of his tunic. Here's Toph. i got to tell you, I really liked Toph in the animated series, but I kind of fell in love with the character after writing her in the, uh, in the comic book. She is a lot of fun to write. And I also think that Gurihiru did a great job in her redesign. So in the comics, she'll look a little bit older. She'll also be wearing dangly earrings instead of those little poof balls on either side of her head. I think she looks great. Zuko proved to be the most difficult to redesign. In my script, I originally um, wrote that he would have long hair, like Ozai. Um, it would be it would be sort of a visual um, a visual indication of his temptation to become like his dad. Unfortunately, when Guri Huru drew him with long hair, it looked a little bit too much like business up front, party in the back. It was a little too mullety. So um, they eventually replaced his mullet, his Zuko mullet, with um, this Korean pop star haircut that I think suits him very well, makes him look cool. After the character designs were done, Gurihiro started the process of, you know, comics image making. Most of us go through the same steps. Um, when I'm making my own comics, I start with thumbnails, so that's what Gurihuru did here. Are the thumbnails for page 5 from The Promise. Their thumbnails look a lot better than my thumbnails, I have to admit. Their thumbnails actually look a lot better than my finished art. So in thumbnails, what you're supposed to do is figure out what the panel composition is, what the panel layouts are, um, how the characters fit with each other. So here's a close-up of the first couple panels from, from the thumbnails. After the thumbnails are finished, uh, after they went through a round of notes, Gurihiru did um, pencils. So here you can see on that first panel, they pulled the camera back so we could see the grandeur of Earth King Quay's throne room. And here's a close-up of that. And after these went through a round of notes, um, 
Guruhu did the, the finished art. They, they inked it and they colored it. I think they did an amazing job. They took the art style of the animated series and they really adapted it to comics. They did things in these images that are um, very comics-ish, that take advantage of the strengths of the art form. You know, um, that, that first panel especially really invites you to linger on it. It's a good thing that that's a still image instead of a moving animated image. And here's a close-up of that awesome looking panel. So next year, there will be three volumes that will be released. Promise Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. Here are the final art of Part 1, the pencils of the cover of Part 2, and the thumbnails of the cover of Part 3. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to um, watch this video. I hope you are as excited about this uh, this comic book series as I am.